places, and we're going to go back to the book of Romans, our responsibility to the gospel, in the gospel. Father, thank you for this opportunity. We ask, Father, you give the congregation ears to hear, hearts to receive your word. Help me to make it plain, Father, that we can grasp it and live in ways that are pleasing in your sight. This we ask in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. We thank you in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Again, we invite you back to the book of Romans. Romans 1.16 says, Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God and the salvation to everyone who believes. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. Because the message went out to the Jewish people first, and then it went to the Gentiles, and that's what the, Paul has reference to. He was an apostle. He was sent to declare the gospel to the Gentiles. He's not ashamed. Why is the power of God on the salvation? Now, as we're looking at the gospel, just to review a little bit, the righteousness of God is revealed in the gospel, Romans 1.17. The righteousness that God gives you and me when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. The righteousness. And notice it says it's revealed from faith to faith. It's all of faith. It's not a works. It's all of faith. Just as it is written. And again, the word of God, what we preach and teach has to be based on what is written. If it's not written, it's not true. People come up with stuff that's not written. And so it's nothing new. It's written. And he, he quotes from the book of Habakkuk. It's written, the just shall live by faith. So the righteousness that God gives us when we accept Jesus Christ is revealed. Everybody understand where I'm coming from? The only way to get righteousness or to be righteous before God's eyes is to have his righteousness. The only way to get his righteousness is to put your trust in Jesus. All right? And so Paul is not ashamed of the gospel. The message where we're headed to today is take the gospel everywhere. I want to challenge you to take it everywhere. Take it everywhere. If you're not ashamed of it, Paul wasn't ashamed of it, therefore he's going to take it everywhere. And so what we're going to be saying today is take it everywhere. Take it to vacation. Take it to, uh, to work. Take it to, uh, you know, to the doctor's office. Wherever you take it everywhere. Take the gospel because it's the power of God to salvation to everyone who believes. The only way to be saved is putting our trust in the gospel message. People need to know Jesus. Remember the song that was sung a long while ago? People need the Lord. They need the Lord. So Paul says, I'm a debtor. I owe. It doesn't matter what kind of degree you have, how many riches you have. It doesn't matter. I owe you the gospel because the gospel, when you put your trust in it, the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, you are saved. So when Paul talks about the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. Next, the wrath of God is revealed. The wrath of God is revealed. Now, in Romans chapter 1, Paul mentions what happens when people reject the gospel is that God gives them up. Old Testament Proverbs says that God lets people eat the fruit of their, of their own ways. Amen. That's wisdom literature. See, if you do nothing, you can't expect to have anything. So Paul quotes from another, if you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. Amen. See, uh, wisdom is crying out loud. It's not that hard to figure out. Wisdom. And so Paul says, uh, again, that what God will do is, if you don't like to retain him, he will let you live your life the way you want to live your life. And I've been telling people lately, there are only two kinds of people in the world. The one that says to God, your will be done. And those to whom God says, your will be done. So you can do what you want to do, but you got to pay the piper. There, there are the results of that. The gospel then reveals God's righteousness. The gospel also 
uh, re reveals what happens when we don't believe it, the wrath of God. The wrath of God comes against everyone, and God gives people love. Look at Romans chapter 1 and uh, verse 24. Romans 1, 24. And notice what the Bible says. Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness. We read this a little bit last week. Uncleanness to the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves. See, the solution to that is the gospel. Not more classes, not more education, not anything human beings can come up uh, with. The solution, as Tony Evans once said a long time ago, if God is your problem, then God is your solution. Nothing else you can come up with. And so God says he gives them up. Notice what verse 25 says, Romans 1, 25. Who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. See, God is blessed whether you want to bless him or not. We're just saying, bless his name. But if you don't bless his name, he's still blessed. Amen. He's blessed forever. Then Paul says, amen. This is true. Look at verse 26, Romans 1, 26. Notice what, what he says. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions. For even their women exchange the natural use for what is against nature. I don't care what kind of laws Congress is trying to come up with. I don't care what kind of rules and regulations and what people are trying to change in education. And, uh, you know, we're living in a time now when uh, they, they tell me that the rich and famous are leading the, pro leading the, leading the parade and they're now raising their children and they're not telling them whether they're, what gender they are. You say by the age of three or four, they should be able to figure it out themselves. That's wicked. You got a, you got a baby that's created in the image of God and that's female, and you're going to let that baby decide? And you call that progress? That's not progress. They call themselves progressive. No, that's regressive. You, you went crazy. You're back in, in the sin. And then, and then trying to get everybody else to live that way and approve that. Look, look at what it says here in Romans 127. It says, likewise also the man, leaving the natural use of the uh, woman, burned in their lusts, yes, one for another, men with men, committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalties of the error which was due. I don't care if you're rich enough like one of my friends. I mean, not my, my friends, but one of my favorite basketball players. I don't care if you're rich enough to get a, a cocktail, keep yourself alive. You know, but if you're living in immorality, it's shameful. Whether it's heterosexual or homosexual. It's shameful. And so receiving in themselves the penalty of their error. See, no, no matter what human beings try to do, my brothers and sisters, the wages of sin is still death. You can't, you can't get around that. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans one twenty eight. look at that. Another time it says, even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. See, in their knowledge, you got that? If you don't want to retain God in your knowledge, God's not going to make you. But God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. Let's go on to verse 129, Romans 129. Being filled with all unrighteousness. Look at this, immorality, wickedness, covetousness, covetous, which is greed, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whisperers, Romans 130. Backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, 131. Undiscerning. See, I don't care how many degrees you get, you turn away from God, you don't have spiritual discernment. Untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful. You see, what the gospel does is it delivers us from that. And only the gospel. That's why Paul said, I'm not ashamed of it. When you have people living like this, 
what they need is the gospel. I got an invitation. Uh, the governor is going to be doing something with pastors and all this. And uh, what they want to do is come together and see if we can find a solution for the opioid epidemic. The solution is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. You, you know, I heard, uh, so what you need is you need somebody powerful enough to take the taste and the practice out of, your, out of your mouth and out of your ways. That's what the Holy Spirit does through the gospel. And so you, we can sit down and come up with all kinds of plans. They don't work. People who are dead in trespasses and sin live according to that spiritual death. Amen. And so we got people, you see, the world is running scared because they know this is crazy. And they're willing to sit down and come up with a program. The problem is in the church, we're willing to try to develop a program ourselves. It, it doesn't work. No program. You can't program people from life to death, from death to life. You can't program people from blindness to sight. You can't program. There's no program you can come up with that's going to make a deaf person hear. A paralyzed person walk. There's no program. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Therefore, Paul said, I'm not ashamed of it. Romans 1.32 is the next verse. Look at it. It says, people know that they know the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death. Not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. Amen. They approve of those. You know what that is? See, in our society, we, we went to, uh, with tolerance. You remember? But now tolerance, it says, uh, the, the definition of tolerance goes like this. Not only do you have to tolerate, you have to approve. you got to celebrate. Romans 1 said this a long time ago. Not only do the same, they do the same, but they also approve of those who practice them. And so now what we have is that if you don't go along with immorality and sin and wickedness and evil, you're called a hater, and, they, and people don't rest until you turn over to their side. So as Christians, we have to stand up for the truth. And we, we move back to Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, because if you want people delivered from this mess, it's the gospel. So my point today is take it everywhere. Take it everywhere. Because everywhere, everybody you meet that doesn't know Jesus needs the gospel. Don't be ashamed of it. You need the gospel. Let's go to Romans chapter 15 and look at 14. Romans 15 and 14. And what we'll see in Romans 15, 14 is, uh, and 14, uh, and we'll, we'll move down through the scriptures there. But we're going to see there are three marks of mature believers in Christ in Romans 15, 14. First of all, he says, they're full of goodness. You see that? Then they're filled with all knowledge. And then they're able to admonish one another. You see, instead of people suffering from the wrath of God, unloving, unforgiving, implacable, you can't talk to one another, you can't agree, when people are convicted to Jesus Christ, they uh, come to Christ by faith, they put their trust in the gospel, they grow, what happens is now that person develops into someone who's full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, and able to talk and admonish one another. See, when you have a mature church, that's what you have. You have people full of goodness. And then you have people filled with all Christian knowledge. That's the idea. People who can tell you how to get saved. See, it's not good enough, my brothers and sisters, to be a mature Christian or think you're a mature Christian. And you run into people and, you, and they say, uh, well, how do I get saved? And you say, well, come to my church and my pastor will tell you. You need to know. You need to know. And if you don't know, you're not a mature Christian. A mature Christian is full of goodness, filled with that Christian knowledge. See, you know that you're saved, and you know you can tell someone else how to get saved. If you can't, you belong in Bible study. Amen. You, uh, how dare you be in church 40 years, and somebody asks you how to get saved, and you say, well, talk to my pastor. You're supposed to know. Amen. 
you got to know the gospels. You see, a lot of folks are ashamed of the gospel. By shame. Now, they haven't memorized it. They haven't put it to use. They don't practice it because they don't believe it works. It's the gospel. The Holy Spirit uses the gospel. The word of God does not return void. Take it everywhere. Why are you ashamed of it? Take it everywhere. You know, uh, you go to the barber shop, take it there. You go to the job and people, well, there ain't no Christians on my job. That's why you there. Take it there. We got a whole lot of folks ashamed of the gospel. That's because you don't know what saves people. Did it save you? I know what I used to be before I got saved. Woo! It was the gospel. I was, I was full of mess, but the gospel changed me. It'll change anybody. It's the power of God and the salvation to everyone who believes. Amen. Ain't nobody more powerful than the gospel. Nobody. But many people are ashamed of it. You tell them Jesus died for your sin. He was buried. He rose the third day. He's alive and alive forevermore. And even if you don't want to hear it, I'll tell it to you because the Spirit of God will work on your mind. You're not stronger than the gospel. There are a whole lot of folks that was out there. We were all out there. It was the gospel that changed us. So what does the gospel do? It takes people from who are filled with the wrath of God, hatred, backbiting, immoral. Such were some of you. Amen. We all had our own thing. We were doing our own thing. Like the songwriter said in the 60s, whatever you do, do it till you're satisfied. And you know we did. Whatever it was. But God saved us. He delivered us. Called us from darkness to marvelous light. He made a change in our lives. He did it through the gospel. So what if you're the only one on your job? Don't you know God and one is a majority? God and zero is a majority. He don't need you, but he'll use you. Amen. Someone said, God can't do nothing without us. I find out he saved the thief on the cross. And what, what man interviewed in that? I mean, in, uh, intervened in that? That thief was was. was uh, the, uh, reviling Jesus, he was just as messed up as the other thief. But when the spirit of the living God began to work in his heart, he said, Lord, when you enter into your kingdom, remember me. Where he get that theology from? Where that theology come from? Jesus had said, listen, he said, the spirit moves. He where he wants to. And you can't tell where he's going or where he's coming and which way he's going. Such as everyone is born of the Spirit of God. Amen. Someone said, I went to the church last night. Well, I didn't go to the church. I was working one Monday night. And my heart wasn't right. And what happened was Jesus sent me a man to give me the gospel. I took it home and I said, well, let me read this track. And it changed my life from then, my whole family, everybody I'm associated with. The change happened because I put my trust in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Take it everywhere. Amen. So when I, when I go on Alaska cruise, I take it there. Amen. I go to Disney World. It's, ooh, Disney World. Ain't nothing like Disney World where Disney don't have the gospel. And if you think you've seen something in Disney World, wait till you see what the gospel will do. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. You take it to the YMCA. You take it to the gym. You take, take it to the restaurant. I take it everywhere. Because you're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Power. Power. Wondrous working power. In the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Ain't nothing like the gospel. Ain't nothing like the gospel. Full of goodness. 
You see, the Bible tells us in Romans 2, it's the goodness of the Lord that leads us to repentance. Goodness is part of the fruit of the Spirit, right? Love, joy, peace, long suffering, so forth. Goodness. Amen. Goodness. You see, the idea of goodness is goodness, it's kindness, it's uh, you live in a way that's, uh, a, ma that makes the gospel attractive. You become attractive. You make Jesus Christ attractive because you live in, in a, such a way that the light of Christ shines through you. Amen. Amen. A lot of folks are good for nothing, but we want to be good for something. Good for the gospel. Goodness. You see, when you look at a, at a church, that, that's, that's the mark of a mature church. Goodness, knowledge. Knowledge to know how to be saved. Knowledge to know how to live for the Holy Spirit. Um, to live for Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. And then you can admonish one another. Admonish means you warn people. See, a lot of folks, uh, you know, uh, the Bible says when the wrath of God comes, you can't talk to folks. <laughs> you can't talk to people who are under the wrath. They, they think they know it all. They don't want to hear nothing. You know, you know they, they're in trouble. Their lives are a mess. But they don't want to hear anything. There's nothing you can tell them. But when you become a mature Christian, you're able, when you have uh, mature Christians uh, ministering together, living together, walking and talking together, what happens is that you're able to warn one another. Amen. See, in other words, people can take some correction. The Bible says that the spirit, of, that the word of God is given so that there might be some correction. All of us need correction. When we, when we become mature, we can take it. Anytime you're in a situation where you, you can't talk about stuff, you know, and I tell married people, you know, uh, if you live four, five, six, eight, ten, twenty 10, 20 years, and there's stuff you can't talk about then, and you just swept under the rug, then that rug going to be awful lumpy. You're going to have to climb mountains just to get to the bedroom. All that stuff you didn't got. We, you know how it is. We, we don't talk about that. Oh, we don't talk about What y'all talk about? You can only talk about stuff that's real light. And you can't have a deep relationship. But when you, when you grow, you're able to admonish one another. Because we all need correction. Amen. This Christian life is not lived all by itself. So we take the gospel everywhere. Romans 1, 15 and 16. Romans, excuse me, Romans chapter 15, rather. Uh, 15 and 16. Romans chapter 15. That's Romans 15, 14 we have on the screen. And uh, as we get to Romans 15, it's, Nevertheless, brethren, I have written more boldly to you on some points as reminding you because of the grace given to me by God. See, God will give you grace, just like he did with Paul. He will give you grace to accomplish his purpose wherever you are. Unmerited favor and kindness. You and I can do nothing on our own, but through the grace of God. Paul said this in 1 Corinthians 15. He said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. He said, now, I labored more abundantly than the other apostles. I worked hard at it, but it was his grace working in me. My brothers and sisters, God's grace will work in you so that you can accomplish where uh, the work that God has called you to wherever you are. Starts out there with being, not being ashamed of the gospel. Take it everywhere. Everywhere you go, take it. Don't ever give it a vacation. Take the gospel because it's the power of God unto salvation. Uh, our, our brother that's always witnessing told me he uh, found a young lady, a young girl on, on the bus and was able to pray for her. Because the gospel is the power of God and the salvation to everyone. Everyone. You know, I, it's been my experience. People tell me, well, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I told one fellow, I said, you know, you force, every, you force your way of life on everybody else. Everybody else has to put up with, with, with your life. And then you tell me the problem with Christians is that we're trying to force uh, our lives on you. We're not forcing our lives on you, but you're trying, you're trying to force your life on us. But I, but I love you enough to give you the gospel. To tell you, and then you can do with it what you want. I'm not going to force it, but I will give it to you because I know it's power. 
saving power in the blood of Jesus. So Romans 1.15, uh, Romans, excuse me, 15.15, 15, it's all on the screen. He says, the grace of God given to me. God will give you grace. There's no excuse that we can't do something. People say, well, you know, I, uh, I got a problem with that. That's why Paul said we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Someone said, well, you know what? I'm not good at witnessing. God will give you grace to do it. God he equips us to do what he wants to do in us. He can do it. And he takes those of us who really don't have a whole lot going on ourselves. Not many noble are chosen. Not many wise. Not many learned. Not many who got the degrees. Not many who got all these, these things going for them. Because they would think they do it for them on their own. But God loves to use us. That's why I say we're just a nobody. Trying to tell everybody. Everybody. About somebody. Who can save anybody. Anybody. Praise the Lord. That's the gospel. Romans 15, 16, the very next verse, Romans 15, 16, says that I might be a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering of the Gentile, Gentiles might be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. That's a whole lot in that verse. I don't have time to teach that whole verse. But notice, here's what Paul says. Paul says, when you and I come and we begin to function in the body of Christ, we minister to our families, to our kids, our grandkids. We minister to each other. We come to the church. What happens is that the people to whom we are ministering, they become the offering unto the Lord. You see, Old Testament priests had to deal with animals. The New Testament priest deals with people. So Paul says in Romans chapter 12 and verse 1 and 2, he says, uh, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, present your bodies a living sacrifice. See, that, see, the living sacrifice is that you're alive, but you're alive under God, and you no longer are alive to yourself primarily. See what I'm saying? It's not about you primarily. It's about your relationship with the Lord. So you present your bodies a, a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Holy and acceptable. What Paul is showing is that, listen, you go back to Romans 1, and you look at the wrath of God. You look at how people were, are so messed up. You look at how God gives them up. They're filled with all kinds of sin, sickness, and death. And what happens is through the gospel, we become acceptable. You see what I'm saying? Paul says, this is what I'm doing. He's saying, I'm ministering so that the offering of the Gentiles, not talking about the Gentiles trying to uh, take out some money out their pocket, but the, themselves, our lives become acceptable. At one point, we were not acceptable. At one point, we turned God off. At one point, we were enemies. But we've been reconciled. And now our lives are acceptable. And when you, if you take five minutes to dwell on that and think about that, that'll start you to shout. It, it, it Maybe inside, it, it'll, it'll move you because you, you sit there and you think. So sometime this week, you sit there and think, listen, I, my life is acceptable to God. Oh, my life. Why? Because, because of the gospel, he gave me his righteousness. Ooh. Uh, if we can get on the screen, Romans chapter 8, verse 3 and 4. Romans chapter 8. See, the gospel of Jesus Christ has changed us. And we now become acceptable. Look what it says here in Romans 8, 3. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh. The law can't change us. See, and, if, and if there's a ministry that's always telling you what you should be doing, you should do this. You ought to do this. Stop doing this. You need to do that. That's ministry of law. Works. Telling you what you should be doing. Listen, we can't keep the Ten Commandments. How am I going to keep what you're saying? <laughs> so you give me some more law. 
And that's what a lot of people, a lot of ministries are full of law. Well, do this, do that, stop doing this. That's law. It's what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh. God did by sending his own son in the likeness. See, this is the wisdom of God. Jesus wasn't a sinner. Jesus did not sin. Jesus could not sin. He could not sin because he did not have a sin nature. Hallelujah. Since he did not have a sin nature. So the test that all, all the tests that Jesus went through were not to see if he was going to pass. It was, it was the tests were to show you that he was built uh, so that he would pass. Everybody with me? That's the test. The test is to show. I just heard the other day about uh, they built this bridge and all the engineers knew that it would handle all kinds of weight. So they filled the trucks, they filled the bridge up with all kind of 18 wheelers. So what was the test? We're tested not to see if it can handle these 18 wheelers. We're tested to show you that you, that, that you can't overload this bridge. No matter how many 18 wheelers loaded up you put on, this bridge is going to handle it. That's what, that Jesus stood the test because he had no sin nature. He could not sin. He passed the test. He was holy and righteousness. Holy and righteous. So what God did in sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and then on the account of, and because of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. Look at verse 4. Romans 8, 4. And what I'm talking about, the gospel, look at this. That the righteous requirement of the law. You see that? We don't have to live anymore to try to keep the law. The righteous requirement of the law is fulfilled in us who do not walk according to our own fleshly energy, but according to the Spirit. You see that? When you and I walk in the Spirit, the righteous requirement of the law is fulfilled. That's amazing. The righteous, the, the law. See, the, the law condemns all of us. But because we have a higher principle, the principle of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, when we let the spirit of God use us and we yield to the spirit of God, the righteous requirement of the law is fulfilled in us. Somebody ought to say, praise the Lord. <laughs> praise the Lord. The righteous requirement. God didn't bend his law. He, he didn't lower his standard. He's not grading on the curve. What he did was found a way to make us A-plus students. Through Jesus. Amen. Through Jesus. And that's what the gospel does. And so the gospel brings us to the situation we're full of goodness, full of knowledge, and we can, be, we can talk to one another. We can warn one another, and we become acceptable to one another. So what am I telling you today? The message is this. Take the gospel with you. Take it everywhere. We read 15 and 16. Let me, let me go to uh, Romans chapter 15 and uh, let's go to 17. Romans chapter 15, verse 17. That's what I'm trying to tell you today. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. That's all you need to know. And when people come at you, just give them the gospel. No one else, this is unique to, to Christianity. Romans uh, uh, 1, uh, 15, 17 says, Therefore I have reason to glory in, in Jesus Christ. Reason to glory in Christ Jesus and the things which pertain to God. So you just stay with God. Just stay with God. Stay with the gospel. Stay with what you know. Put your trust, your faith, your hope in the gospel. That's all. You take it everywhere. It changes lives. Look at Romans 15, 18. Next verse, Romans 15, 18. It says, I would not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not accomplished through me in word and deed. Notice, to make the Gentiles obedient. You see what the gospel does? Didn't it make you obedient? Weren't you a mess? Weren't you a rebel? Weren't you out there on your own? And the gospel made you obedient. And so that's what Paul was saying. I want to take this thing everywhere. The gospel is what transforms our lives. The gospel, verse 19, Romans 15, 19. He goes on to say, listen, in mighty signs and wonders. You know, what people say, I wish we could see signs and wonders today. Look in the mirror. 
You a sign. You a wonder. If you're a woman, call yourself Wonder Girl. You a, you, you, you a sign. You know what you used to be. Wonder of all wonders. How'd you transform? You a wonder. Same thing with us men. We, I mean, listen. We are a wonder. Amen. Anytime you go from seeking women to seeking Jesus, that's a wonder. How, what changed your filthy mind? What changed you? The gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Come on now. You know, many of us men, men, we went to church to find girls. And God was good enough. Hallelujah. To help me. He was good enough to let us find him. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God. So that Paul says from Jerusalem and around about to uh, Elycrium, I have fully Preach the gospel of Christ. The idea is he didn't water it down. Declare it fully. Don't half step with it. Uh, don't let the devil well, whisper in your mind and say, don't be so hard. Don't be so hard. No, they don't want to hear that. Fully preach the gospel. It's the power of God. Romans 15, 20. Look what he says. That's 15, 19 again. Romans 15 and verse 20. What Paul is going to say there, again, he's not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. He said, and so I have made it my aim to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build on another man's foundation. In other words, don't be afraid to take it where nobody's heard it before. Paul said, I made it my aim. I made it my aim to preach the gospel, not where other folks have preached it. So in other words, don't just show up on Sunday and declare you, you love the Lord. When you find yourself in places where nobody knows it, pray and ask the Lord to empower you. I'm going to declare the gospel. Nobody's heard this. He says, That's how, I'm not ashamed of it. And therefore, I'm taking it everywhere. I want to take it where people have never heard it before. Amen. That makes sense to you? Amen. Look at verse 21. Be winding down on this. It says, but as it is written, to whom he was not announced, they shall see. To those who have not heard shall understand. See, there are people like Paul. There was Jesus Christ. And the gospel goes out everywhere. People are committed to preach and teach this gospel. And so when people like Oprah say, well, Jesus can, can't be the Savior because there are folks who don't hear the gospel. What about folks who haven't heard the gospel? The gospel is going out everywhere. People are committed to bring this gospel. Don't let anybody cause us to be ashamed of the gospel or ashamed to identify with Christ. Because it's going out everywhere and people are getting saved. Amen. Verse 22, Romans 15, 22. Notice it says, For this reason I also have been much hindered from coming to you. Much hindered. You know Paul said in Romans 1 he wanted to come. He was hindered. See, when you're focused on Jesus Christ, there are some things you just, you just can't get to. Because it was his goal to take this gospel everywhere, then that stopped him from doing some other things. You see what I'm saying? You can't be everything, all things to all people and do everything. And so if you're focusing on the plan of God in your life, some things are going to be hindered because that's not what God wants you to do. And that's all Paul is saying. He said, you know, I was hindered. I wasn't ashamed. I was hindered. And he says, the reason I was hindered, he said in chapter 1, he was hindered. Chapter 15, he explains it. Part of the reason I couldn't get to you because I was going where people hadn't heard this thing. Amen. Amen. Everybody with me on that? Listen, when you let, God, when you let Jesus lead you, and he's a mighty good leader, you let Jesus lead you. There are some things you just can't get to because Jesus is leading you his way. Amen. Amen. And folks will get upset with you. They got upset with Jesus because he was, he was following his father. There were some things he just said, I can't do. So when you're, when you're following the leading of the Lord, that is what gives me so much freedom because you can only do what God tells you to do. Amen. 
there, there's some people I deal with and, and people you help and all this and, and, uh, you know, they can't find me at different times. Yeah, well, what happened to you? What happened to me? I was doing the will of the Lord. And right then and there, you know, your, what you had in mind was not on God's will for me. Amen. Amen. So it's so, it's refreshing. It takes a lot of the, the, uh, a worry and all this out of your life because you're just doing what God says do. And you, and so when you're doing what God says do, you're going to be hindered from doing some, some things that God is not, not interested in. Amen? Praise the Lord. Look at verse 23. Romans 15, 23. He says, but now no longer having a place in these parts and having a great desire these many years to come to you. The 24th verse. He says, whenever I journey to Spain, <laughs> Spain, I shall come to you. For I hope to see you on my journey and to be helped on my way there by you, if first I may enjoy your company for a while. And you can read the rest of this in chapter 15. Paul is taking this, this, this gospel. His plans are to take it to Spain. See what I'm saying? He says, I'm going to take it everywhere. I'm a, you know, I'm a, uh, I am a, an apostle to the Gentiles. I got a plan. I got an aim. The purpose in this message and this whole message is about our responsibility to the gospel. Our responsibility in the gospel is to encourage you to take it everywhere. Because you owe folks who don't know Jesus. Take it everywhere. Don't be ashamed of it. Because guess what? You put it out, somebody going to get saved. Amen. Somebody is going to get saved. And Jesus said it this way. He said, my sheep will hear my voice. I know them. They will follow me. So my brothers and sisters, my challenge to you and my charge to you in our responsibility to the gospel is that it's the power of God and the salvation and the righteousness of God is revealed. And on the other hand, if the righteousness of God is not revealed in people's lives, the wrath of God is. And the only deliverance from the wrath of God is the gospel of Jesus Christ. So wherever you go, God has you there for a purpose. Take the gospel with you. Take it everywhere. Take it to everyone. And don't be ashamed of it. And don't make excuses. Amen. Don't, 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 don't allow the devil to come up with excuses why you can't open your mouth. See, because if you can open your mouth and cheer for your favorite uh, sports team, then you can open your mouth and talk about Jesus. Amen. I've heard people tell, well, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not good at communicating. But when you're doing your thing, amen, you got no problem. You got no problem strutting, walking, talking, popping. <laughs> when you're in your element, just make Jesus your element. Once you make Jesus your element, then there's no problem. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Listen, see, because uh, deep down you, you need to have the same philosophy that I have. I don't care what y'all think about me pr primarily. What difference does that make? You ain't got no heaven or hell to send me to. <laughs> Jesus said, don't fear those that can only kill the body. But you fear the one who can cast you alive into hell. That's the one you and I want to fear. Lord, I don't want to offend you. I may offend somebody else. I, we can deal with that, but I don't want to offend you. I don't want you to close your mouth on me. You said if I confess you, you'd confess me. I don't want a time when, when the time for you to say that you know me, that you your mouth is shut. So when they look at you and they say, Jesus, do you know him? I want you to say yes. Yeah, I died for him. He's one of mine. He's got my nature. He's been born of the Spirit of God. I love him. He's been sealed with the Spirit of the living God. He's mine. He's one of my jewels. I own him forever. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. If, if, if Jesus says, well done, thou good and faithful servant, what do I care what you think? Amen. You see, we're only here for an audience of one. Someone say, preacher, that was good. I enjoyed that sermon. It don't matter what you think. 
if the father is saying, well done, thou good and faithful son. That's all that counts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because when I go, you, there's nothing you can do for me. Amen. You can walk by. I'm in the casket there. You can walk by and say, well, I brother preach some good sermons. <laughs> I heard, I heard that my brother Tony Evans say, when, guess what? When, when, when you, when you have your funeral, everybody gonna be there but you. <laughs> you gonna be in heaven or hell. Your body. <laughs> everybody gonna be there but you. I said, you go, Tony, man. That's all right. Amen. You got, we, you and I both, all of us, we got to stand before the true and living God. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Well, if I could sing it, I'd sing it right now. But, but two reasons I can't sing it. I don't know the words. <laughs> you remember, remember Holmes used to sing that, Brother Holmes. I'm not ashamed of the gospels. The gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not afraid to be counted. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise his holy name. Is he worthy? Is he worthy? Is it worthy for you to show up for him? Can can you show up on your job? Show up on your vacation? Can you take the gospel with you? And pray and let the Lord use you somewhere? Because his word will not return to him void, but it will accomplish the purpose for which he intended it to be. Amen. See, you already know you got the, you got the victory. Amen. It's like the baseball player. You know, you, 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 you come up to the plate, and you remember years ago, Babe Ruth came up to the plate, left-handed batter, and he pointed out to the outfield, beyond the fences. Amen. I've seen this on old TV. Babe, babe, babe pointed. And as that pitcher began to pitch, next thing you know, wow! All the way up. Home run. Babe strutted through those bases. You know when you give the gospel, it's going to accomplish God's purpose. So step up the bat with confidence. I know I'm going to hit a home run. I know I'm going to hit a home run because I'm going to deliver the gospel fully declare the gospel, it's going to accomplish its purpose. Amen. Amen. Can you see Jesus on, on Mount Calvary? There he was. They mocked him. They told him to come down. He knew coming down was no option. He wouldn't come down from the cross just to save himself. He decided to die to save you and me. And I'm glad he didn't come down. I'm glad he wasn't confused. I'm glad he wasn't twisted one way or another way. I'm glad the Bible says he had set his face like a flint to Jerusalem. He went to Calvary. He died for you and me. He had our names, our, my, our, our individual names on his mind as he died. He went into a Christless eternity. Three, year, three hours dark. The father turns his back on him. He becomes sin for us who knew no sin because he knew that the righteousness of God was going to save us. The Bible says in Hebrews 12 that we need to run this race with patience like Jesus did. For on the cross, he despised the cross. He endured the shame because he knew you and I were coming. Amen. He endured all that. He knew you and I were coming. That one day he'd melt our hearts, all resistance we had, and we would come and say, Lord, I'm yours. Have your way with me in my life. I surrender, I submit to you. Hallelujah. Let's be like Jesus. The gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the power of God under salvation. Don't give up on it. Amen. Don't be ashamed of it. Don't think it won't save. Because it saves to the uttermost. You know how I know it does that? Because I run into some folks I hadn't seen for years. And they say, what you doing? I say, I'm saved. What? You, what happened to you? I got saved. You? Yeah, the gospel even caught me. Amen. And so since the gospel caught you, 
It has power to catch anybody. Amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. I'm not ashamed. I want to challenge you. That's all I want to do today. I want to challenge you. Don't be ashamed. Man, put that word out, my brothers and my sisters. Put my put that word out. Because God is worthy. He's worthy. Even though they may reject you, they may ridicule you, they may call you everything but a child of God. He's worthy. He's worthy. Praise the Lord. 